Lesson 1.2 Selection and Snapping In Lesson 1.2 we're going to learn how to select and deselect objects. We're going to learn how to use keyboard shortcuts to speed up drawing, learn how to use snapping in Vectorworks and learn how to control snaps in the snapping palette. In this lesson, we want to learn about selecting, deselecting, and snapping to objects. But before we can do that, we haven't got any objects. So the first thing we have to do is to create some objects. I'm going to use the rectangle tool to create some objects. This is the same thing that we did last time. We select the tool, we go to our toolbar and see which mode we want. So for example, that one. Click to start, click to finish, and don't forget over here on the object info palette, we can actually type in the size. Now I'd like you to use about two inches 50 millimeters if using metric. So 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters. I'd also like you to practice using these dots here, the box position or the origin of your object. So we'll set that to zero and that one to zero as well. And you can see it moves our rectangle. Now let's start another rectangle. Let's find the center of the first one. Click and we'll come out here and we'll hit the tab key once. 50 millimeters across or two inches across and minus two inches down or minus 50 millimeters. If you don't put the minus sign in, if you just put in 50 millimeters, you can see it's going up. What we need to do is to make that come down. So minus 50, hit the tab key again, and you can see it comes down to here and we enter once, enter again, and it finishes. Now I'd like to go back over that because this is a really quick way of drawing. Just up here, I'm going to go on this gear button here, and I'm going to choose this option here, allow numeric keypad entry for instant data bar activation. And I need to go through what that means. So let's start our rectangle. We're going to come down here. I'm going to type 50 this time. I'm not going to hit the tab key. And you'll notice that it goes directly into that area. Tab key once, minus 50 again, enter once. That's the enter key near your numeric keypad. Enter again and it finishes. Now this is a really quick way to create objects in Vectorworks. So you click to start, you type in 50, tab, minus 50, enter once, enter again, and it is really, really quick. Now there's another quick way to create objects in Vectorworks, and that's to double click on the rectangle tool. So if we double click, it brings up our rectangle dialog box here, so we can make dimension our active class or none our active class. We can type in the size we want, choose the box position, turn on position at next click, click OK, and then we just tap where we want or we click where we want to put our rectangle. And that again is a really quick way of drawing. So I'll cover that again. I'm just going to make sure I'm drawing on the none class. So we double click on the rectangle tool. We choose our settings 50 by 50 or 2 inches by 2 inches. Our box position or our origin is at the top left. Position at next click is turned on. Click OK. There's our rectangle. It follows our cursor around. And then we just go click and it positions it for us. So that is really quick. Now that we've got these three objects, we can talk about selection. We couldn't talk about selection before because we had nothing on the screen. So this is our selection tool. Some people call it the arrow tool, but it's called the selection tool. And it has a keyboard shortcut, which is the X key. So if you're working in, for example, the rectangle tool, and you want to quickly get back to the selection tool, hitting X will take you straight back there. We have some modes here. This is for disabling interactive scaling. So at the moment, I've got one object selected, and I've got these blue handles. If we move our cursor to one of those blue handles, first of all, it changes to a cross, the snap cursor, it's called. If I move closer, you can see it changes to an arrow, double-headed arrow. This is the interactive scaling mode. And this will actually change the size of my object. Let's just escape from that. If I want to finish something, I just hit the escape key. This one will interactively scale multiple objects. This is for wall insertion mode. We haven't covered this yet, but it's if we have a window and we want to pull it out of the wall, we have to make sure that's turned on. These are our marquee modes or our selection modes for our marquee. But let's talk about selection first. So you'll notice that when my cursor goes near an object, the object highlights in orange and my cursor changes shape. It changes color and it drops its little tail. Click once, that selected that object. If I select the next object, then the first one is deselected. So if I click, 
click and click, it deselects the previous object. If I hold my finger on the shift key, I can select multiple objects. Question is, how many objects have I got selected? Let's just have a look up here. Rectangles, there are three of them. They're all on different classes and I can assign those to the class that I want using the object info palette. So they're all together, they all look the same. If I click and hold my mouse button down, this technique is called the marquee selection. If I totally enclose an object, it can become selected. And you can see it pre-selects or pre-highlights them every time I totally enclose one. If I stop there, so right now, it actually looks like I've got three objects selected. But if you look at my object info palette, I've only got two. So be careful of that. Let me just move my cursor away. And you can see clearly now, there are only two selected. But when you move near the third one, it's not actually selected, but it does look a little bit like it. Let's do that same marquee again. This time I'm going to hold down the Option or the Alt key. So I drag my marquee, and you notice that as I touch the objects, they become selected. So these two techniques are quite different. One, the objects have to be totally enclosed, and the other, you just have to touch them. So that's two different techniques that we've got for that. If we have a look at our tools here, you can see that the rectangle is hotkey number four, line tool is hotkey number two, and the selection tool is the X. So I do use these hotkeys. I don't use all of them. I don't use mirror, for example, as a hotkey. But if you want to, they are there, and it tells you right there what the hotkey is. They do speed up your drawing enormously, and if you can change your drawing technique to use the hotkeys, you'll find that you really make quick progress. So let's have a look at our options for marquee again. This one here is the lasso method. So in this method, you actually draw your lasso around the objects you want to select, and it selects those objects. This is the polygon one where you click, and you make sure that you totally enclose an object, and then it selects it, and it's double click to finish. I tend to use the first one. I find it the most easy, uh, but you're entitled to use whichever one you want. So if we select an object, and then we go shift and we click on that object again, it becomes deselected. So if I select an object and then I shift and drag my marquee, it will deselect the first object because it was already selected. One of the things you might notice is that these objects are stacking one on top of the other. You can see that this one here that we created second is hiding some of that one. This one's hiding all of it. So let's have a look at snapping. When I go near the corner of an object, the cursor changes to a snap cursor. That's the cross. If I go to the middle, I can see my snap cursor. If I want to drag this object accurately, I need to use my snap cursor. So that snap, I can drag that, snap it onto the other object. It fits beautifully. I'm just going to undo that using my keyboard shortcut, which is undo, control Z or control Z. If I just drag that, it's very difficult to get those to snap together. If we zoom in and have a look, you can see they don't quite match. But if I use my snap cursor, perfect. So let's just undo that, and I'll put that back where it was. If I want to see through my objects, I can hold down the B key, and that will do it's what's known as X-ray mode. Uh, some of my students call it B for behind. You can actually see behind objects. So I'm going to create another rectangle. I'm just using my short key for again. So this time you can't see any of the objects that are underneath. We know they're there, but they just can't see them. Hold down the B key, and you can see right through them. It's really, really handy, that one. So let's just delete that because we don't need it. We're going to snap to other objects. So. We're still looking at snapping, and we're still looking at these blue handles. So we know that if we go near an object, we can activate it or we can select it. We also know that if we go to the corner or one of those blue handles, we can get the interactive scaling cursor. This does interactively scale the objects, and it does change their size. If I select two objects, you'll notice I've lost my blue handles. I can't interactively scale them unless I choose this option here and then I can interactively scale all of them. I tend to work with this mode because it stops me accidentally stretching objects when I've got multiple objects selected. 
I'd like to look at the snapping palette. So I'm just going to pull this out so we can see it. So this is my snap to object. If you don't turn that on, you will lose those things like the center, the corners. You won't see the little uh, snap cursor, the little cross. So we need that turned on. This snap finds the intersection between two objects. The top center is the same. So I'm going to draw some lines. I'm just going to use my line tool. I want to find the intersection of those two lines. Object slash object, that's the intersection, that's what it finds. This snap here, snap to angle, will actually snap me to specific angles. So 0 degrees, 15 degrees, 30, 45, and so on. Makes it very quick to draw those angles. It also allows me to find things like perpendicular. So if I've got an angle that I don't know, let's try this one here. There's my line perpendicular, there's 15 degrees, there's perpendicular. Perpendicular to that other object, which is really handy when you're drawing a project and it's not quite square on the page. So the perpendicular can be really, really handy. That's this one here, that's that snap. So we've done snap to objects, we've done snap to angle, we've done snap to intersection. This one here is called smart points. This one is really, really powerful. So smart points allows you to touch a point like this, you get a little red square, and then you can line up with that point. You'll notice the vector has already found that one for me. And if I come down here, it'll find the intersection of both. Or up here, the intersection of both of those. So if I choose that point, I can line up with those two points there or those two points there. You can't have more than three of these little snap points. As soon as I go to the next one, I'll lose my first one. If I go to another one, I'll lose the second one. Go to this one, I'll lose that one. And you don't have to do anything. So I'm not actually clicking anything. I'm not touching anything on my keyboard. I'm just moving my cursor near that object and leaving there for a short length of time and it will activate. If I double click on this, it will bring up my dialog box. These are my smart cursor settings. And you can see here that it says acquire smart point if the mouse stops for 0.2 of a second. The standard might be longer than that. It might be 0.5 of a second, but I've shortened it. We also have this ability here, the set datum if the mouse stops for so many seconds, in this case, one second. We also have the ability here to turn on the datum if the mouse stops for a certain number of seconds. You'll notice that I have mine turned off and I use the G key to manually set. How does that work? We go to a point like this, we hit the G key and that becomes a datum. If you have a look at my floating data display, it says X15, that is measured from my datum. So it's really handy. So you hit the G key, it resets all my numbers to zero. I can measure from that point. It becomes really powerful for positioning stuff in space, positioning stuff next to a wall, positioning stuff next to a landscape feature. It is really useful, this floating datum, to measure from a, a specific point. Let's turn that back on. Let's bring those back. This time I'm going to turn that off because I don't want to see it. So what have we got here? So under general, We've got all of our smart cursor settings to control things like my smart cursor cues. That's the words that turn up. If you turn those off, you won't see the words. We want to see the snap points. I just can't think how you could use it if you turn these things off. Zoom line thickness and snap loop. We haven't talked about the snap loop, but I'll cover that shortly. I don't like snapping to the grid. The grid snap is this one here. I do not like using that. I have it's caused me trouble in the past, but if you do want to snap to the grid, by all means, turn it on, but if you start having trouble or you can't draw the way I do, this could be the reason. Snap to object. It's going to snap to all of these parts of an object. If you want to turn one of these off, just tap it, and it'll stop snapping to that part of the object. Snap to angles. 45 and 30 are standard. If you put a semicolon and type 15, it'll do what mine does. Smart points, we've talked about the smart points. We also have a smart edge, which I'll demonstrate some other time, but it is another really powerful feature. I don't use it very often, but when I need it, it's really cool. And snap to distance, we're not gonna cover that today. So, okay, so that's controlling our snaps. We can turn the snaps on, we can turn the snaps off. And if I use some hot keys, there's a hot key here for Q. Q is the hot key for that one. W is the hotkey for that one, E is the hotkey for this one here, and R is the hotkey for that one. The hotkey for this one is A, the letter A. Let's 
let's just turn that off. This is the S is the hotkey for that one. D is the hotkey for this one. And F is the hotkey for Smart Edge. So the keyboard shortcuts do work like that. If you look at your keyboard, they actually run in a line, provided you got them this way here where this goes. Q, W, E, R, A, S, D, F. Works really well. So I'm going to put that back where it was. It was in here. And I can shorten that, make that a bit longer. And I need a bit more room here for my tool. So I'll just pull that down. I'm just going to delete those. I'm going to draw some more lines. I'm just going to use my line tool. I've just used my hotkey to get to it. So I'm going to draw a line from here. I want to finish down to here. Click. I can start here. Click. I can touch this point here. Line up. Click again. And I'm lined up with those objects. So it becomes very quick to make your drawings extremely accurate in Vectorworks. Well, let's have a look to see what we've learned in today's lesson. This is the end of lesson 1.2. In this lesson we learned how to select and deselect objects. We learned how to use keyboard shortcuts to speed up drawing. We learned how to use snapping in Vectorworks. We learned how to control snaps and the snapping palette.